Greetings, Star Wars fans. Today we will delve into the brief history and technical specifications of one of the galaxy's most iconic starfighters that I think is somewhat underappreciated in the more mainstream Star Wars fandom, the Z-95 Headhunter. Join me as we explore the origins, design features, and combat prowess of this legendary fighter craft. Fans of the movies may think that the ARC-170 we see in Revenge of the Sith is the actual direct predecessor to the X-Wing fighter. But the ARC-170 is a heavy reconnaissance fighter that seats three that is much larger than the X-Wing or the Z-95. It's certainly in the lineage, but it's not the exact predecessor to the T-65. That honor goes to the Z-95 Headhunter. The Z-95 Headhunter was developed in collaboration between Subpro and Incom Corporation in the decades preceding the Clone Wars. It was intended as a versatile starfighter suited for a variety of roles, from reconnaissance to dogfighting and system defense and patrol. The starfighter was named after a hunter-predator creature from the Koromon Islands of Freja that collected the heads of its prey after hunting and eating the victim, called the Koromon Headhunter. While overshadowed by later models like the T-65 X-Wing, the Z-95 played a crucial role in many conflicts throughout the galaxy. The Z-95 bore a striking resemblance to its direct successor, the T-65 X-Wing, with its distinctive wing configuration and fuselage design, so much so that fans might confuse the two ships at first glance. However, it featured only two laser cannons instead of the later T-65's distinctive and iconic four, and lacked the stock astromech droid socket found on the X-Wing. The Z-95 was also typically armed with concussion missile launchers, but loadout depended on the owner if they so chose to customize their own fighter to their liking. In general, the Z-95 packed quite a punch despite its relatively small size. Other technical specifications would include a length of 11.8 meters. A hyperdrive was not standard. However, an aftermarket one was available to be installed if the owner so chose so. And it also had a crew of only one pilot. As brought up before, the Z-95 Headhunter proved itself in numerous engagements, from skirmishes with pirates to full-scale battles against the forces of the CIS during the Clone Wars and, Gal and later the Galactic Empire with the Rebel Alliance. Its agility and firepower made it a favorite among mercenaries and independent pilots seeking a reliable, cheap, and versatile starfighter. Despite its age, the Z-95 remained in use by various factions well into the Galactic Civil War era and beyond. The saying goes, as long as they keep making upgrades for this baby, the Z-95 will never become outdated. This statement is a testament to how its design was quite modular and could be modified by many aftermarket upgrades as well as its commonplace popularity and very low production cost and price. One of the biggest advantages that caused some pilots to prefer the Z-95 over its successor, the X-Wing, was the Z-95's ability to perform tighter turn maneuver. Notable individuals who flew Z-95s as pilots or as personal craft includes Han Solo during the defense of an outlaw tech base in the corporate sector, Booster Tarek, who flew a Z-95 that was modified with X-Wing style S-foils and an extra set of laser cannons. New Jedi Order apprentice Jaden Kor flew one on various missions during his training under Kyle Katarn. Han and Leia's daughter Jaina Solo was given a Z-95 as her first personal ship, called the Crystal. Rogue Squadron member Corrin Horn also flew one on various occasions and missions. And the former Emperor's hand turned smuggler and later Jedi Mara Jade flew a Z-95 that had a front-mounted ion cannon instead of the typical concussion missiles. The Z-95 Headhunter may have been overshadowed by his more famous successors, but its legacy lives on in the annals of Star Wars history. What are your thoughts on the Z-95 Headhunter Starfighter? Personally, I really like the ship and think it's underrated and underappreciated. At least, like I said, in the mainstream, broader Star Wars fandom. Also, tell me what your personal favorite starfighter in the comment section is. Join me next time as we delve into another fascinating aspect of the galaxy far, far away. May the Force be with you, and I'll see you in another video.